Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the aerodynamics of a golf ball. So I'm kind of going to break it down into two different aspects. Obviously, there's the velocity you hit the ball at and the launch angle that you hit the ball at, which impacts how far the ball is going to go. But for the sake of this video, we're going to talk about the spin of the ball and the surface of the ball. Obviously, the harder you hit the ball, the farther it's going to go. And obviously, depending on which angle you hit the ball at, the launch angle of the ball, either the farther or shorter it's going to go. But the spin of the ball and the surface of the ball are kind of more, you don't really see it exactly. So we want to zoom in here and figure out what is going on. So first, we're going to talk about the surface of the ball. And obviously, a golf ball has many dimples on it. The kind of story goes is that you know back in the day when kind of the golf sport of golf was first being invented and people were hitting you know balls with sticks they kind of discovered that the the older the ball was the more beat up the ball was seemingly the farther the ball traveled so as they kind of took this information obviously over the years they developed a certain pattern of dimples on the ball as we see today and this allows golf balls to travel very far distances through the air while being a not very aerodynamic shape because spheres are pretty aerodynamic they're more aerodynamic than like a flat plate but they're also not an airfoil so first I'm going to show you how air travels around a ball with no dimples on it so this is a no dimple sphere perfectly smooth, you can consider it, and it is traveling horizontally through the air, and it's not spinning at all. So the air, it would be coming at the ball, and then hitting it like this, and then obviously, we know what's going to happen to that air, it's going to hit the ball, creating drag, but it's also then going to redirect itself around the surface of the ball. Obviously it needs somewhere to go. But what happens is that this air this air, these air these path lines of air, they don't have enough energy to go over the entire ball and then come off smoothly like here. Okay? This does not happen. Compare this to like an airfoil. Okay, the air, it splits, goes to the top, goes to the bottom. But when it comes off the edge, the, the trailing edge of the airfoil, the air, you know, the, the two path lines then kind of meet up. I mean, they're not like the same molecules, but they, but they meet up again and they come off smoothly. Right? So there's very little drag here. But what happens is this golf ball, air hits it and starts wrapping around. But it just doesn't have that energy to go all the way around. So it will break off. Okay? It loses energy. And then it breaks off. So all the kinetic energy that the air has kind of gets converted into potential energy but it doesn't have enough energy to then come back down the side of the ball. Same thing happens on the bottom, breaks off. So there's no difference in these because this thing's flying straight through the air. There's no difference, so there's no lift being created. These forces cancel out each other. But what happens here is that now you have all this theoretically empty space back here. So now this air, air just in the general area, comes back and then fills in this large space here because this is low pressure and then obviously up here is high pressure so air fills in the back of here and we don't want this why because pressure equals force times area. 
So let's say if this was like 100 pascals, whatever. So the units of pascals are newtons per meter squared. So the larger this area is back here, so if we multiply that by area, okay, which is units per meter squared or something, the larger the area, kind of the more force that's going to be created. Okay? So, for example, let's say, okay, let's move on here. So now we'll come back to this. So we want to, we'll talk about reducing the area here. But now we have a dimpled golf ball. Now what happens here is that the air comes over, and we'll talk about the reason why in two seconds, but the air travels farther around the ball before it breaks off. Now why is this the case? Okay. Well, the air travels around farther, and so the area of lower pressure back here, there's still going to be, it's not going to travel perfectly smooth through the air, but there'll be an area, there'll still be an area of low pressure back here, but it will be smaller in area. So the reason why this happens, so let's zoom in to like the surface of the ball here, and we have our dimples, pretend those are exposed to the surface. So there's a little boundary layer that's formed in these cups, these dimples, okay? So there's a bunch of little, little tiny boundary layers of air, of air kind of spinning around. And what this does, it just provides a smoother surface for the air, air to flow over the top of it and just allows it to flow farther around the golf ball. These air, these this turbulent air along the surface adds energy into the air going over and allows it to travel farther over the ball before it eventually loses energy and then breaks off the surface of the ball. But it's done its job because now it's traveled farther. So let's say the low pressure in the back of these balls, just let's just say it's a hundred pascals, which is a very small number, but whatever, we'll go with it. The pressure is a hundred pascals, okay, in the back of both these balls, okay? So this is units of newtons per meter squared. So let's say this area back here is one meter squared, just, just say for numbers. We take 100 pascals times one meter squared, that gives us 100 newtons of force of drag that's created from this pressure difference here. But also, let's say there's a pressure difference between this high pressure and low pressure. So this is 100 pascals lower than this high pressure area. But then we have Let's say this one, where you have a 100, pre 100 pascal pressure difference between here and here. So that'll be 100 pascals. And let's say the area here is a half a meter squared. And that would be 50 newtons. So as you can see, a lot less force of drag on this golf ball. All right, so now let's say we optimized the dimple pattern on the ball and the amount of area here is reduced to the maximum possible. But we still want the ball to go farther. Okay? So how do we do that? We put spin on the ball. Another very important aspect. So, so we have our golf ball here, has our dimples, whatever. We want this ball to go farther. And so we want to put backspin on the ball. This might be kind of hard to visualize, putting backspin on a ball to get it to go farther, but you think if you ever throw in a baseball, you, you put backspin on the ball, and that's how you get the farthest throw out of the ball. Now, why is this the case? Well, it's pretty simple. So as the air is flowing over the surface of the ball, if, the, if there's backspin, so the ball is spinning this way, it will have a propensity that energy will carry that that air farther over the ball on the top side here. So instead of kind of breaking off here, it's being carried all the way more down to the bottom. Now obviously the air going around the bottom is also going to break off. It's going to break off earlier, but the air on the top is 
coming down farther. So the area is the same as, let's say, our dimple ball. So the area of this low pressure area here is the same, but what is different is the resultant force. So here, these two forces here, so we can, you know, imagine we have a force coming up here, a force coming down here. So I'm going to draw this down here. So let's say this is our first ball here. So we have a force coming here due to the air coming off in this direction. Okay, and then we have force coming out this way. But obviously, we want the ball to go farther, so we want a resultant force in this direction. Okay, but these cancel each other out, so it's not going to travel farther. But Actually, the, the resultant forces, so equal and opposite reaction. So the air is being pushed off this way. So the air is going in this direction, so the force will be pushing down in this direction. So that's more what it should be drawn like. So it's coming this way, coming this way. You just cancel each other out. We have this ball here, okay? So here we have a much... So let's say the air is breaking off all the way down here. So if it's coming off this way, the resultant force is to push the ball this way. So we have a force coming up here. And now this air is coming off down in this direction, pushing the ball up in this direction. So now this air is also pushing up this way. So where's our resultant force going? Up here. So now the ball will be traveling farther because the resultant force of the accelerations and the change directions of this air here will be going up in a direction we want to go if we want to achieve maximum distance on the ball because the more force we have going up the longer that ball will stay in the air so that's what backspin does and this is the same for that's why you put backspin on a you know a baseball you put backspin on a um, basketball but then you think okay I want, what would putting topspin on a ball do so if we're talking about like a, a baseball you throw a curveball or what is that doing? That's putting top spin on the ball. So now the ball is spinning this way. So now the air is coming here. This air loses energy faster than the air coming around the back. But now the resultant force is pushing down this way. So the ball is going to decrease its height faster. So like a fast or a, a curve ball, it's going to have more. So you can have more vertical downward movement than if you just threw a four seam fastball, which wouldn't have any downward movement or as much. Now obviously there's limitations. So the ball, so if you put velocity, you hit it at an angle. If you're not continually adding energy to a system, it's not going to actually rise. So when you throw like a fast a four seam fastball, sometimes you'll hear about them saying like a rising fastball. Well that's physically impossible because once you're done adding energy into the system, once that ball releases from your hand, unless there's like a severe wind gust that's blowing straight up on the ball pushing it up, the energy isn't actually gonna pick the ball up. It's not gonna lift it up any. It's really, I mean, gravity is going to take effect. Gravity, the force of gravity is a lot stronger than the forces being created here by this redirection of air. So the ball is not going to really stay. It's not going to really rise, but it's going to stay in the air longer. And it's not going to drop as significantly, as significant vertically. So those are just the aerodynamics of the golf ball. Hopefully you found this interesting. I think it is. Thank you.